Politics is a dirty, dirty business, and politics ruins everything, even politics. Today we are discussing a lawsuit that was filed by Eric Swalwell against Mo Brooks, Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Rudy Giuliani, and I think maybe others, in an attempt to hold them responsible for the events of January 6th following their incendiary speeches that incited a riot. All right, Eric Swalwell, for those of you who don't know, the man who is known for two things, farting on national television, or I should say allegedly farting on national television. Chris, so far the evidence is uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat mm -hmm. an election. And threatening to nuke Californians over a Second Amendment debate. From at Rep Swalwell, and it would be a short war, my friend. The government has nukes, too many of them, but they're legit. I'm sure if we talked, we could find common ground to protect our families and communities. Eric Swalwell is suing uh, Mo Brooks, Trump, Trump Jr., Giuliani, in a DC court on the basis that they incited the violence through their speeches, uh, attempting to hold them responsible for damages, legal fees, etc. Children, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful beach over there. May you go walk and leave me alone for another six minutes. Uh, we are on location, by the way, on Minister's Island in New Brunswick. It is an island that is only accessible during the low tide where a road becomes visible and navigable. Or you could drive across it during the low tide and we have to be out of here by 3 o'clock because once the high tide comes up, you're stuck on the island. The cars have started going across the island. We must recoil to the vehicle and drive. Get in the car. Get in the car. We're moving. We're moving, people. Oh gosh, get in. You're driving? Okay, with that said, Swalwell is suing them in an attempt to hold them responsible for the results, and I'm putting that in quotes because causation is an issue here, for what ensued following their incendiary speeches on the day of January 6th. Okay, Donald Trump, in the context of this lawsuit, has filed a motion to dismiss on the basis of absolute presidential immunity for anything and anything he did as president. That is a questionable argument to be determined how the courts adjudicate on that. Uh, absolute immunity for anything a president does in the context of their presidency uh, seems to be a disputed question of law, but we'll see. In the meantime, uh, Mo Brooks had filed a request, a or a request for certification of the Justice Department for the Justice Department to assume his defense in the context of this lawsuit in virtue of the Westfall Act. Uh, we've discussed the Westfall Act a number of times in previous vlogs. Basically, it's the law governing torts committed by federal employees in the context of their employment. And that is going to be the question at issue here. Whether or not the tort that is alleged uh, against Mo Brooks and the others was committed in the context of their functions as uh, employees, federal employees. So, but what ended up happening is that the Justice Department, it's a 29 page filing has declined to certify or to take up the defense for Mo Brooks on the basis that Mo Brooks's conduct was not conduct in the context of his employment as a federal employee. They were political statements. It was a political rally and political rallies are not a function of a federal employee's employment. And therefore the federal government is not going to take up the defense which means that Mo Brooks is going to have to assume the costs of his own defense against this lawsuit filed by Eric Swalwell in the DC courts. A lawsuit which may be somewhat frivolous on its face to some, but may succeed in advancing, if only to be a nuisance and a cost for the defendants, because I suspect this lawsuit will have to be dismissed on the merits, if not only for questions of First Amendment rights, uh, if only for a question of causation because to suggest that those speeches were the cause of the January 6th riots, uh, or to suggest that there was anything uh, remotely resembling civil liability as a result of those speeches, given the actual tenor of those speeches and the deeply enshrined value that Americans place on First Amendment rights, it's a stretch in fact and in law in my humble opinion, but alas, the Biden Justice Department, if one wants to think politically, has declined to certify, to take up the defense of Mo Brooks, meaning he's gonna to have to assume the cost of his own defense going forward, and it's not gonna be cheap because litigation never is.
But we'll see where it goes. We're going to discuss it with Robert Barnes tonight because it is on the menu for this evening's live stream with Robert Barnes. With that said, if you like my videos, if you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. And if you want to support Robert Barnes and myself, you can find us at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. With that said, take care of yourselves, check out on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace. I forgot to mention one thing about Eric Swalwell's lawsuit. Not only is he seeking damages, monetary, and legal fees, he is seeking that the defendants be required to provide written notice to Swalwell of any large gatherings or political rallies to prevent further disruption of the functions of the government. No. He is. If you think that is a justiciable conclusion, Marion, we'll see. I'm going to have to watch the rest of this video. <laughs> no, this is the end of it. We have to watch the follow-up on the results of Swalwell's lawsuit. Now it's a real peace out. See you later. Booyah.